Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal, and this YouTube channel is all about Jerusalem and Israel. Today I decided to keep rolling with these good old Canva animations and share a little about the demographic makeup of Jerusalem as it stands in the year 2023 when I am recording this video. We'll take a look today at how many people live in Jerusalem, how many Jews live in the city compared to Muslims and those of other religious belief systems, and why, at least if statistics are to be believed and compared to the national average in Israel, Jerusalemites might be summed up as poor, but happy. Over the years, Jerusalem has changed hands more than a dollar bill in a thrift store. So I'm going to put together a whole separate video talking about the history of Jerusalem, at least its demography. But for now and today, we're just going to concern ourselves with the present or at least the very recent period of history. In the year 2023, Jerusalem is the most populous city in Israel. And it's, of course, also the city that Israel claims as its national capital, although international recognition of that fact is in full. And if you're really interested, I talk about that whole shebang in another video. According to 2022 figures from the Central Bureau of Statistics, the CBS, which is Israel's national statistics body, the city has 971,800 residents, so just sort of a bit shy of a million. Tel Aviv, by contrast, has about 468,000 residents, so less than half a million. Although that number gets a lot bigger if you count the various commuter towns surrounding Tel Aviv. But just counting the urban areas, this means that Jerusalem's population is actually slightly more than twice that of Tel Aviv. Of course, Tel Aviv has a cool coastline, great beaches, and Jerusalem doesn't, but we have more people. Jerusalem's demographics are very complicated because it's kind of like three cities in one. The east of the city identifies mostly as Palestinian, although a security barrier separates them from the actual Palestinian Authority controlled areas which are beyond that fence. That is except for the couple of neighborhoods that are within the Jerusalem municipality but beyond the fence like Kafr Aqab. Nothing about Jerusalem is actually straightforward. The Jerusalem Institute for Policy Research produces an annual yearbook which is truly a treasure trove of data for statistics nerds. According to the year-end 2020 stats, Jews constituted 60% of the population of Jerusalem, less than what many people would think. Muslims, 37%, Christians, 1.7%, and those of unclassified religion, 1.1%. The statistics were sourced from data made available by the Ministry of the Interior in Israel, Misrat Apnim. Looking at the historical data, we can actually see that the percentage of Jews in the city has been declining over the past decade. In 1988, for example, 72% of the city's residents were Jewish. The Jewish population is also split along religious lines. Some of the city's Jewish residents self-identify as Haredi or ultra-Orthodox, Others regard themselves merely as Dati, which translates to regular religious in English, roughly. And some consider themselves to be Masorti, which translates as traditional. And finally, there are, of course, those who consider themselves to be secular. According to 2022 CBS figures, 35% of Jerusalem's Jews consider themselves to be Haredi, 22% consider themselves to be religious, 25% define themselves as traditional, and 18% define themselves as secular. That combination, ultra-Orthodox, Orthodox, and traditional, together, yields 82%. So popular conceptions that Jerusalem's Jewish population is largely religiously observant are actually pretty much true. More facts. Jerusalem has consistently received a dismal rating in quality of life comparisons with other Israeli cities. These are compiled by the same CBS, the Statistics Bureau, which I mentioned earlier. The survey uses a number of benchmarks to assess residents' quality of life, and in both 2019 and 2022, Jerusalem ranked last among Israeli cities in terms of its quality of life. Every year, the CBS publishes this data online in a media release. The benchmarking process includes looking at quality of life indicators like the level of cleanliness in a city, the quality of drinking water, and the levels of cancer among both men and women. In 2011, we can see that Jerusalem's residents were happier than the national average with their work-life balance. 77.4% of Jerusalemites liked the balance versus 63% on average nationally. I guess you could say that it's easy to be satisfied with your work-life balance, if you don't have a job. The full graphic showing how Jerusalem compares against national averages across all measured quality of life estimates is available on page 30 of the PDF, which as usual, I will leave a link to in the description. Just be aware that the info is available in Hebrew. We've all heard the saying that there are lies, damned lies, and statistics. So to wrap this video up, I thought I'd throw in some conflicting statistics, which together make absolutely no sense. So in total conflict with that picture, we also have data from the Jerusalem Institute for Policy Research, which I mentioned earlier, that indicates that Jerusalemites are happier than those in other cities. 
According to 2020 figures, a remarkable 90% of Jerusalemites, or 9 in 10, said that they were satisfied with their lives, slightly higher than the national average of 88%, which already seems kind of remarkably high. Writing for the Institute's blog, Sharon Achmani suggests that the explanation for this apparent paradox might be as follows. All Jerusalem's economic plight remains overall quite poor, employment options and salaries relative to the tech nucleus of the country in Tel Aviv are extremely limited. Jerusalemites are finding happiness and satisfactions in other domains of life like family life, their sense of community and of course religious observance. Thanks for watching another video. I hope this one's been interesting. If there's a topic you'd like to see me cover, feel free to leave a suggestion in the comments. Until next time.